Hi guys, it's Sarah Seidelman. I wanted to share a story in case it might help you. Um, so this comes from probably going on 12, 15, something, more than 10 years ago, I was in uh, a shamanic training that lasted about three years. And towards the end of that training, we were introduced into a sacred practice. Um, it was gifted to my teacher. Um, this practice, um, which was called the Shaking Tent. And if you Google that, you'll probably read a little bit about it. But it was a practice that took place in teepees historically uh, for the community. It was often offered to the community and people were welcomed into this teepee um, if they were skeptical about the presence of the spirits or skeptical about, um, yeah, basically wanted, wanted to have some sort of faith and didn't have any faith. That's how it was at least introduced to me. But it was a healing practice also for so... If a person was very sick, a child or an adult, they would be brought into this teepee and this ceremony would take place. And in the ceremony, the shaman would be bound. So they were bound with ropes with their on their knees um, and with their hands behind their back. So your hands were tied um, with multiple knots and the same around your ankles. And then there was also a tied knot between your feet and your ankles. And so the shaman was bound up and then uh, the, an, you know, obviously sacred space was opened and a group of spirits was called um, that, could, that could do healing, uh, could perform a healing on the sick person or the person that was struggling. And at the end of the ceremony, uh, the ceremony would take place. I have to back up a little bit to explain this, but in the ceremony, all the lights would be turned out. So meaning all the candles were snuffed out. So it would take place in the pitch dark. And in the dark, often um, there would be a sensation. People would sense things like the presence of spirits. And anyway, this happened. So during our training, we each got to um, experience this pra this practice. And so several of us, there were probably, I don't know, 20 at a time were bound up like this in this way, with our hands behind our back, tied to our um, feet and so forth. And the shaman was meant to feel very uncomfortable. This is supposed to be a painful experience. And in this way, you are kind of making an offering of your suffering and hoping that the, the, the helping spirits will take pity on you and help this person that you're praying for that's not well, that's sick, or going under, going under through something very extremely difficult. And so um, we were praying for a particular um, thing when we did our experience of this in this training. And I remember getting tied up, bound, and then um, you know the lights went out and the spirits were called. And I don't know how long it lasted, maybe, five minutes, 10 minutes, I'm not sure. But at one point, the ceremony was complete, the lights were all turned on, and many of my compatriots had been unbound, meaning they had been freed from their ropes. Um, and I had been watched, you know, them witnessed as they got tied up, but I was not unbound. And I don't know if you can imagine how that made me feel. I just thought, oh my gosh. And there were other people also that were not unbound. But I remember thinking, oh my gosh, like what did I do wrong? Did the spirits not think I'm doing a good job? Like, does God not love me? I mean, I went into a huge, it was very painful and difficult. And for days afterwards, I kind of felt ashamed that something was wrong with me. Anyway, just as one goes through these challenging experiences in life, right? And then six months passed because we were going to, we came back to go back to the training once again. And in that six months, I finally endeavored to go on a journey to ask my helping spirits, like, what happened in that time? And or what could I do if I'm ever given an opportunity to participate in a ceremony like that again? Um, is there something I need to know? And when I went on the journey, what my helping spirits told me is that this they would like to help me but i had to make an effort and i was like oh and then i thought back to that night when i was sitting there bound in the darkness i just sat there kind of inert waiting for something to happen you know thinking the spirits were just going to come and help me but what they told me is no you have to try to get out of those bindings 
And I was like, okay. So six months passed, we're back at this gathering. It's time to do this, this ceremony once again. And once again, I was tied super tight with multiple knots by all my, my colleagues. We were all bearing witness to the, the, you know, the honesty of these knots and how, you know, there's no way you could get out of this. The ceremony began, they turned off the lights and I just began to like wiggle my hands. I mean, I really didn't do too much because it was just so tight. I just started to wiggle my hands. And as I wiggled them, I was suddenly completely unbound. And when they turned off the lights, there I was. And so this was a profound teaching for me. And what I wanted to pass on from this is just this reminder that we can ask for help and what we need to do is take some kind of action, no matter how minimal it is towards whatever it is that we're longing for, because that's when the spirits can help us, when we are also making an effort. So I hope this has been helpful to you. And I'm also wanted to invite you um, to join. Um, we have a free class coming up if you're interested in learning some creative, um, if you're just, wanting to nurture your own creativity, I invite you to join. If there's a link in my bio um, to the Paris Shine, it's called the Parisian Salon. So I hope you'll join us. Thanks for watching.